Okay, we're going to continue our elements and principles, and now we're going to talk about the seven principles. They're listed here, so once again, you may want to create a graphical organizer or concept map, or you may just want to write this information down as you go. You should pause and rewind as you need to in order to get all this information down, and it may be helpful for you to make some sketches in various areas to help you understand what these are. You are, re you are responsible for knowing all this material. Our first one is balance, and there's different types of balance that we're going to talk about. They're listed here. The first one is symmetrical or formal balance. Here we have the Taj Mahal in India, and look at all the examples of formal or symmetrical balance. Everything is symmetrical along this line. Every part of the building is symmetrical on both sides. These towers, the trees, the walkways, everything is symmetrical. It makes it feel very, very formal to us. Compare that to this one where we have asymmetrical or informal. This is a chateau in France, also a very, very large building that is very um, old and very prominent. But look at how this makes you feel as compared to the one we saw here. This one seems very formal, while this one seems less so, even though the buildings are very similar in size and age. There's no place here where we could draw a line in the middle of it and have it weighted out at all. It's much heavier on this side, both in the building and the landscape, as compared to this end here. In fact, we can see all these chimneys over here and none on this side. We also have radial balance. Think of radius. Things that are radiating out from the center. In each case, we can see the center and then concentric circles going out. Not all the circles are the same going out, but if we go along around the circle, we see the same sort of pattern re repeated. We can also have vertical balance. Notice that when we're talking about vertical balance, we're talking about the top half and the bottom half are equal. So our line of symmetry is actually horizontal here. That can be a little bit confusing when you're looking at these names. Remember when you take your notes that vertical balance means the top and the bottom are equal. For example, here in this lake. This was actually built and designed so that we did get this sort of vertical balance here because they knew this would be reflected in the lake. As compared to horizontal balance where we're talking about the left half and the right half being equal. Again, here the line of symmetry is vertical, but we're talking about it's horizontal because this side is the same as that side horizontally. And here's another example where the left and right sides are equal. We can also see this in floor plans. Which types of symmetry do you see here? Do you see more than one? Do you see more than two or three? There are quite a few here. Our second principle is rhythm, and notice that we have several different kinds of rhythm. You will need to write these down. Rhythm, like we use the word in music, has to do with something that's repeated. Think about like a drum in a musical performance. In this case, we're repeating line, shape, color, texture, or pattern in these different rhythms. Regular rhythm means it is repeated at regular intervals. For example, the blue tiles here or these balconies over here. The balconies going up as well as the balconies going over sideways. Here we see these little cub house designs in the Netherlands where it's repeated each time. The roof design, the windows, the decorations of the colors on there and everything. Random rhythm, for example here on the same cathedral we saw earlier, even though we have similar shapes on the top of each one of these um, little towers, because we have them decorated different, different shapes up here, and decorated different colors, it gives them a feeling of a random rhythm because it's irregular. Gradated rhythm is where we see something basically similar shapes like we saw in geometry, similar. Same shape, different sizes. Here we see these buildings getting bigger as we go over. Here we see these stones that are stacked from big to small on the top. Or the same thing here on this pagoda is the part of the Chinese tower. Our next principle is emphasis. This is where there's something that's been specifically added to catch our eye. 
<coughs> what's supposed to catch our eye in the top view there? What do they use to create this po focal point there? What about in the bottom mosque? What did they use? Did they use one of our elements we talked about before? What's the emphasis point here? Also, as you look at this, think about the symmetries that we see here and the rhythm that you see here. All of these items are used in the same sort of, uh, in the same designs that we see over and over, over. Rhythm, color, symmetry, emphasis. Our next one is proportion and scale. This is in fact proportion like we saw in mathematics where we're comparing the size of things. Anything in a 3 to 5 ratio is the golden mean or the golden ratio. And here we can see in this picture the ratio of how big this building is compared to the Washington Monument and back here. Movement is our next one which has to do with the feeling or flow of the action. What kind of feeling do you get when you look at this pyramid? How about these balconies? Contrast. It's similar to emphasis, but here we're just showing the difference in two different areas. And it can be created in any of these things. In fact, this one here shows a number of contrasts. Think about shapes and materials and even the textures. Do you see both smooth and rough there? And we have unity. Unity is when we have consistent use of lines, color, material, or textures, as it says up here. In this college campus, what has been repeated so that these things look like they belong together? Over here in this room, do you see shapes that have been repeated? How about colors? And in this buildings, in these buildings here, we've talked to, seen the same picture earlier for symmetry. But what elements did they repeat to get a sense of unity? Or here in this cathedral, it was a random rhythm, and we have very colorful colors chosen here, but what did they do to make it feel like it had unity? And in this view, what elements were added so that it has a sense of unity here in the Taj Mahal? Okay, that's it. Be sure that you've paused and rewound so you got all your, all your information down.